Hi, I'm Rob. You know me as Old Bam Guy. And I make you better. That's what I do. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the takeaway. And probably you've been wondering about my golf instruction, how it works, and what's different about it. Some of you probably say, well, well all I've been doing is rebrand what my ghost team was teaching or something like that, or someone else. And then you just change the name. And then, no. Well, here's the problem with that, it doesn't work. My ghost didn't know what he was talking about. Sean Fuller, teaching Molly and golf brood like Tiger Woods, doesn't know what he's talking about. So why on earth would I would want to teach that shit? Makes you think, right? So my instruction is built on how the body needs to move. Correlate that with the golf swing. So you t can learn skills, and that's what I teach, right? I teach you skills. So you know how to move your body correctly. Once you know that, then develop the skills. And skills are like, you know, tying shoelaces, driving a car, riding a bike, shopping on the internet, using a phone, using the internet. Skills are behaviors and activities we do within the context and once we have learned to do that we can create the memory now people in psychology does know this because they all they're gonna use a conceptual name like, like you know god professionals doing otherwise all is unconscious and i go what does that mean and they don't know that because everything we do is contextual behavior and memory That's a free corner stones or pillars, whatever you call that, in how people do things in anything. Either it's golf, sports, performance, or you ask, you know, buying groceries at the you know, at the mall. So what I've been doing over this year is this correlate how the body needs to move, isolate it, you get the core essence down. So when I teach it, you know, you develop the skill set first. And how I do that is very simple. I do that without holding a club, because if you hold a club, you introduce in the context of swinging, and if you've been playing golf previously, your memory is not going to kick in, and you can't stop that. And people say, well, I believe I can stop that. Well, here's the thing, let me ask you a question. Who in the world invented the radio? I know most people today doesn't, you know, use the radio that much. Probably use your computer or, you know, YouTube or other sources. But you probably learned once upon a time in school who invented the radio. And most likely a name popped up in your head called Marconi, right? And that's wrong. The guy who invented the radio was called Nikola Tesla. So why did people in school, teachers and all that stuff, teach you Marconi? They didn't check the facts. They didn't check the evidence. And even if you provide people with evidence, they will try to tell me and other people that, well, that can't be correct, even though the evidence, you know, do your stuff. Uh, it's very hard to talk about this stuff with other people because, you know, you're filled with misconceptions at this point. Guesswork, conceptual framework. When you put your thumb on the shaft, you create the problem. Anyone teaching you to put the thumb on the shaft to hold the golf club, do not understand the golf swing and how the body moves. Period. The second thing they tell you to do is that you're gonna keep your left arm straight in the takeaway or have width for power or something like that. And that's, you know, not correct. It's actually bad. But you try then to follow their instruction. You put the thumb on the shaft, you keep your left arm straight. And then you run into a problem called, I'm going to struggle now. I had people I know that have been struggling with golf for 50 years. As you know, that one of my testers spent five years and found teachers, and they couldn't help it because every time he went to play, he went to share. He went back with that feedback, the evidence, this what you teach does not work. What am I supposed to do now? And the golf gurus, the golf teacher who have PGA license instructor, call themselves golf professional, takes charge a lot of money, been teaching decades, 
hundreds of thousands of lessons, have no idea what to do now. So what are they going to do? They're going to do the same shit again. Because they don't know any better. Then we have people on YouTube who are calling themselves the best YouTube teacher in golf. Some other calls themselves the best golf instructor in the world. And they get it wrong. So then you and me and everybody else, even two pros, have a problem that you, you know, people do not understand. Why do we struggle? In my instruction, that stops. Um, and as you know, I have uh, something called ME, and I can't really pronounce it. It's an illness, uh, it's called energy deficiency illness, if you ask me. That means that any, you know, anything I do, um, I don't recover. And if I talk to a camera, uh, last week I was outside, talk to a camera, and the next day I crashed, I couldn't do anything and, you know, that day. I was sleeping on the sofa, watching TV, slept, fell asleep in front of the TV again, again, and again, all day. That's called a crash in this ME talk. Your recovery, you know, it's just horrible, right? Now, obviously, I couldn't make a video, you know, video taping myself when I'm sleeping on the sofa, wake up, oh, he wakes up now, cool. And, oh, there he falls asleep again. And I guess that wouldn't be a cool video. And I, well, yeah, even though I guess some people would say, oh, that's really cool to watch, I want to do that. I don't think so, but hey, people are different. So you're just talking to a camera like this, and uh, the last few years, the, I had this for 21 years, but the last few years are getting worse. And the trend is, uh, is not, um, well, it's not a good trend. It's like global warming, right? Global warming, it just goes up and up and up, you know, get worse and worse and worse. And people say, do you think humans are responsible for that, the heat is raising in, in the world? Ah, oh, well, I think that's, you know, nature. But do you think we are helping nature, you know, get that, wow, you know, no, of course we do. The people deny it doesn't, you know, doesn't matter because, you know, you're wrong about that, but that's how it works. And my trend is like, getting a little bit worse, a little bit worse over the years, and, and I don't like that, of course not. But it is what it is, so I just accept it and try my best way to rest and all that. So talking to a camera like this is a lot of work, so that's why I try to split it up in a few days so I can, you know, do, I can do it all at once because it's just too much. Anyway, my golf instruction is built on skills, teaching you skills. So once you have those skills, it's like checking your mail, riding a bike, driving a car, tying your shoelaces, you can just do it. Then when you can do it like that, you have a context, you have a memory, and you have a behavior that just works automatically. So when someone asks you, you know, can you hit the golf ball, and you know, and you go, yeah, yeah, of course. You don't think about, well, maybe, maybe today I'm going to hit it fat, maybe today I'm going to slice it again, or maybe today I'm going to hook it again out of nowhere. I don't know why I'm hooking it, but I'm just doing it anyway. Usually that culprit of hooks is the modern golf grip, thumb on the shell. Don't tell the people. Because if you learn how to do this and you you know you can play golf much more enjoyable and fun and they struggle, don't tell them. Then you have you know you take the money. Hey guys, uh, let's uh, bet some money today. And they will look at you. No, we don't want to do that anymore. You just take our money. I'm just lucky, you say. And you they go. No, I don't think you're lucky. You you can do shit differently now. We don't know what that is, but fuck that. We don't want to bet with you anymore. They call hustlers in the old days. Um, when golfers, you know, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, when not, uh, the money in golf was not that great. So a lot of those good people, um, they went and hustled other people, you know, like, you know, golf courses. Hey, uh, they play like shit, and then someone like, you know, who had a lot of money, and so, oh, I'm gonna bet like, you know. So they bet like 100 bucks a hole or something like that. And then uh, this hustler beat the crowd out of them. And uh, one of those stories I read was actually the guy he, in the newspaper, he saw that he won the Masters a few weeks before. So yeah, at the time in the 40s and 50s, people didn't have the internet like we do today, and media and TV and all that stuff in the same way. So it was different back then. And the difference is that people in golf uh, don't understand how the body needs to move and correlate that. 
that's the work I've been doing. So if you're wondering about mind golf instruction, you said I teach you skills. Once you have the skills, you don't need lessons anymore because it's like driving a car or riding a bike. It just works. But people can't figure this out, and it's not a rebranding, it's actually inventing. That's what I do. I invent things. I understand how stuff works, figure out how it works, then figure out a way to explain it and teach the essential, which is skills, in the context. And once you understand the skills in the context, you learn to do them. And that's what the next segment is going to be about. I'm going to go outside, you know, maybe tomorrow or whatever. And then I'm going to you know, shoot the video and demonstrate how the takeaway actually works. So you can have the basic skill you need to have in a takeaway that people can teach you. No one in the world can teach you that. Not Gary Edwin, not Sean Foley, not David Lambert, not Mark Crossman, not Rick Shields, not Steve Pratt. Not Michael Broderick, not J.H. and Sherlock, not Buchomo, Clonormo, Pete Cowan, not John Clements, no one in golf can teach you what's coming up next. You wanna watch that? Hi, I'm Rob. You know Mr. Orbam guy, and I make you better. That's what I do. And this is the outdoor session of the takeaway, backswing, whatever you call it. Because for 120 years, golf instruction is not working. It makes you think it's difficult, complex, and you struggle. I know people have been playing golf for 50 years and still struggle. And the golf instructors, you know, golf professionals who teach golf, they can't figure it out. They can't do anything different. One of my testers spent five years with 12 teachers. He went and played, it didn't work, gave them the evidence, it doesn't work. Now, when they looked at the track, when they looked at the video, they looked at the swing, it looks good, man, but it didn't work. So, when people are in that kind of situation, when they are faced with a choice of teaching something and it doesn't work but it should work you know it should 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 work but it doesn't what do you think you're gonna do then well most people just do the same thing again because it should work but it doesn't so when I was researching golf it's taken many years and the reason why is because I have ME that means I have an energy deficiency illness that make, makes it hard to talk and to do any activity, you know, just talking to a camera or standing here, you know, talking about the stuff drains me. And uh, last week I crashed hard, fell asleep, so hopefully I don't do that today. But you never know, this is kind of the bad thing with this stuff. Anyway, so in modern golf, they teach you to put the thumb on the shaft. In the Tartu Golf Sins, Mike goes to teach you to put the thumb on the shaft. That creates the problem, as I talked about earlier that your wrist wants to do this, turn over like that. That means that your release will need to be fixed. And modern two pros learn to do a hell of release. Picture that. You're gonna win majors, win titles, money. And then you have to fix your release to a hell of release. You can't release fully because your body doesn't work that way. They've been teaching that for 120 years. The second problem that happens is that people teach you to within the takeaway, right? So you're going to have wide takeaway, the power, which by the way goes totally against how the body works. Power in the body works by the following way. If I bend my arms, then I can use my triceps and I can use the, this weight that will have come will happening for power. If I do this, keep my arm straight for power, I get less power. That's how your body works. But if they teach you to have width in the takeaway, usually what happens is people think they need to rotate your shoulders, keep your left arm coming. Check my arm. Wow, it's straight. Yeah, but I push my body on the left side into that position to keep my left arm straight. Because straighten the left arm, or right arm for that matter, straighten the arms up. The elbow will go up and the arm will go down like this. This is how you straighten your arms. 
right, the machine has passed, so we can get back to talk again. So that's how you create power, right? That's how your body wants to work. But if you're trying to straighten my arm like this, like you do naturally in the takeaway, they will feel like well, and no one does that. So what people have been trying to teach in the takeaway is the wrist like this or something like that. My instruction is built on teaching how to move your body without holding a club. Because if you hold a club, your brain will interact with it in the context, fire a behavior, and then also obviously you're gonna fire a memory. Because we ask people a question, you know, who invented the radio? People will say, oh, Marconi. And I said, no, that was Nikola Tesla. But your brain will say, Marconi, what do you think is right? Marconi or Tesla? Now you have to go check the facts. And then when you find that Nikola Tesla invented the radio, now you have to change your mind about that. Here's the thing, your brain is the context of who invented radio is still gonna want to say Marconi because that memory picture it popped up. Now, if I ask people what is five times five, most people just pop up 25. How did you do that? Memory. So this unconscious stuff, stuff people talk about doesn't exist. So my instruction that I developed, and I know some of you are really eager want to know about it, how it works and all that stuff. So what you do in the takeaway is to learn to isolate three different movements in the takeaway. The first thing, what is that? That's a scapula or a right shoulder contraction. And the scapula and the shoulder is like that, with the shoulder blade here. You contract that, like that. That means my arm, this is the evidence by my arm, when it goes into that position, will have the proper position. I can also contract the scapula so my arm goes in this position, which is not correct, because it's supposed to do that. So what I'm going to do then is to isolate this motion. Don't know, you don't need to do anything else with the body. This is isolating. That's how my core instruction works. Because I want to teach you the skill set. If you have the skill, you can always do it. If you don't have the skill, but think you understand it, you can't do it, even if you think you do. But the evidence will show you that you're not. The second thing, once you have learned this and isolated this, is to isolate the second thing, which is to sit down, the pelvis and upper body on the right hip and right heel, and then the evidence is your left knee and left leg will bend and the left heel will come up. Now, from that position, one, two, the th third thing we do is just lift our arms up like that. And they look bent, and this should look bent. Because this position is how you do a perfect or optimal or correct, whatever you call that, takeaway. Is to have you, this is how your body needs to move. When you're contracting the scapula, this lower body, which is the pelvis, the hip is in the leg, by the way, no one can rotate the hip. If you do that, you need to rotate your legs. Do you do that? Usually no. Because that means that you're in trouble. So what my body wants to do when I do this is to start turning. So by contracting my scapula, my direction of the upper body is like this. Then when I sit down, this pelvis, when it hits the hip, wants to do that. And that's not something you need to do actively, it just happens. Here's the thing what most people don't understand. Well, actually, no one understands this in golf, by the way. 120 years. If I contract my scapula, the first thing I do, then sit down. And when I lift my arms, you will see my lower body, which is the pelvis and the hip, and this part will turn slightly. All I'm doing is lifting my arms. So this, when I lift my arms, will turn. Right? What is my upper body doing now? It's tilting. Take away back, whatever you call it, is an upper body tilt, lower body respond to that tilt by turning. There's two different motions here at the same time, and it's natural motion. It's not something you need to learn. You just need to learn to pay attention to what you actually need to do in the takeaway, which is capilla, sitting down, lifting on. Now, Gary Edwin, for example, is a right side swing, talks about 
you know, the posture like this. You know, he doesn't understand this, by the way. That's posture, you know, gonna keep your posture or something like that. If I do a scapular contraction. He doesn't tell you that because he doesn't know. All right. Now, when I develop the instruction, teach you skills, you do that without the club in your hand because when you hold the club, it will make more diff things more difficult because now if I try to isolate my this, which is that, it looks like that. That's my scapula contracting now. And then when I'm sitting down, it's like that. And most people don't isolate things and uh, you know build a skill. They think, okay, I'm gonna do this, you know, scapular contraction, and I'll be up here, and then I'll be in the wrong position anyway. You need to follow the instruction. You need to develop the proper motion motion in your body, so you actually can do it. Most people don't do that. They think they understand, but oh yeah, he explained it. Now I can do it. And that's not how our behavior works. Behavior works by the skills we have. So once you develop this, this, and that. And then you can put them together like that. Now I could talk about the one piece takeaway, of course. But that means that you don't know what skills are involved to get there. Like Andy Kassarenstein was talking about this. Yeah, all you, all you need to do is a one piece takeaway. Well, good for her. How do you do it? She doesn't know. Because she wants 10 measures. So once you have that, that's how you do a proper takeaway. Scapula contract. Sitting down, left heel goes up, left knee bends, lift your arms. There is no rotation back. My Oster, for example, is, you know, he was telling people to go on the inside and up. Now you're stuck. All right, so we're back again after that caterpillar that done his work. Oh, it's in my backyard, so, you know, this kind of thing happens when the traffic around you and all that stuff. And as you can see, you know, we still have kind of winter conditions. So, uh, so it's very difficult to teach people in golf because your information that you have, you know, is inaccurate. It makes you struggle. But you think you understand what you're talking about, but you can't do it because you lack the skills. They can't teach you the skills. The test that I have who spent five years and 12 teachers. Once he contacted me, I showed him what to start working on in three weeks time, it, it just worked because I could teach him the skills that he needed to have that the other 12 PGA licensed teacher could not teach. So once you practice this stuff without the club, develop the skill to move your body like that, then once you put them together, I've been doing these skills for about a long time now, right? then you know this is the position you need to have. And the way memory works, and behavior works is that when you start doing this for the first time, people will feel weird about it. It feels a little bit awkward. Can this be correct? No one else is teaching that. And a lot of those kind of questions I don't want to answer today because it's too much work. So once you have that stuff, you know, you have developed the skill of moving your body in that way. Now in transition, there's three different sequences also. I'm not going to talk about them here. Now once you develop all this stuff, at some point, you know, you have the skills, you don't need less than because now we start to work. But how do you transfer skills from doing this without the club? Is that when you start to doing this and people, you know, grip a club and doing the same thing, that would take some time to learn to correlate, gap a contraction, sitting down, raise arm. Oh, was it this? Oh, yeah. Scapula contraction, oh yeah, sitting down. You see, this club complicates things because now the brain gets different feedback and if you've been swinging golf and playing golf and such before, this holding the club introduced the old memory and the old context of swinging. Or we can talk about in the other terms, the old swing program. And now that will interfere with the new learning. This is why I teach people, don't use the club, learn this, and then at some point when you're doing that, you go, okay, I'm gonna do that, oh, yeah. And then you can start thinking about, okay, I'm gonna do this without the ball first. So I can do that. I'm gonna, you know, do this. 
so I can do that. All right, it's pretty good. Once you learn to master this and all the other skills with without the ball, because the ball will again introduce another element or variable or whatever you call that that makes it more difficult because now you want to hit the ball you're not supposed to do that by the way the way they teach you did you know that they teach you wrong with, with, with this stuff so now your brain knows you looks at the ball and then you go oh yeah i'm gonna do the new takeaway and you go Wah! and you go what the fuck just happened your brain will override you so if the skill is not solidified, so you can do them automatically without thinking about it, like you check your mail, like you tie your shoelaces, like if someone asks you, can you tie your shoelaces, and you go, what the fuck is that kind of a question? That's stupid, right? Of course I can, because you never need to practice that. But golf, the learning is the same thing. If the learning is not solidified and automatic, and the skills are not in place, if you do this, out the club and work cool because then at some point when you start transfer those skills without the club to the ball and such you're gonna take some time because you're gonna, gonna do mistakes right that's what I want to do and if I can do that you do this oh, man. Oh, I hit the ball man then if you can check on video such and confirm you're doing things correctly cool but if you then realize when you look at video and compare that to the for example horns as you see on youtube here and you can't do the same things then it, it means that you're doing the old things and you need to practice and contrast and compare what you're doing the old way and you're doing the new way if you don't know the difference you can't change because your memory and your brain will override what you're trying to do. One of my testers said, the first two weeks he tried to do it with the swing, holding a club and swinging. I said, don't do that. And he tried for two weeks, he couldn't do it. He couldn't learn the new stuff. He tried, but he couldn't. Not possible. So once you have this stuff, then you practice that with a club and a ball and all the stuff, and you transfer without the club to a club without the ball, and then with a the ball, that's how you do it. This way it works is by scapular contraction, sitting down, and then you sit down with the pelvis on the hip, the hips wants to turn. And the second thing I just wanted to add here today, which is that most people teach golf to have square feet like this in your setup. But the problem with that is that your body doesn't want to do that. If I try to sit down now, I'm gonna be a little bit restricted here. I can do it, but that's really not natural, especially in downswing, because your knees are not knees are not made to twist. And if you have your left foot straight to, you know, like this, a lot of people teach you like that, right? Then your knee is gonna twist, and take a lot of heat. That's why a lot of two pros, you know, need to do knee surgery and stuff like that, and they don't know why. Yeah, they teach us a lot of that stuff, basically. Right? So, you take the club, introduce the ball, and at some point you're gonna, basically you're gonna fail. Learning is failing, basically, mistakes. So once you can do this, and you feel like, hey, I got it right, you can check it on video, you maybe do mirror work, whatever, and you can confirm that's what you wanna do. And then when you start, you know, start to swing like that, and you go, oh yeah, and you do all this other stuff you're supposed to do in the downswing, then you can have both power and accuracy, and it won't be difficult anymore. But in modern golf, alternative golf swing system, they can't teach us this stuff because they don't teach us skills. They teach us a conceptual understanding, a framework that doesn't involve skills. It's just an assumption. Okay, one piece there, okay, I get it. How did I do that? Yeah, well, it's unconscious. Okay, what is that? Uh, well, I don't know. But you're a psychologist. You've been in five years of psychology in universities. You should know that stuff. Well, well, I don't know. It's context, memory, and behavior. That's how it works. As soon as you grip the club, your brain kicks in. Oh, yeah. You feel the weight of the club. 
and now all the circuits in the context fires and a lot of you who try to use my grip for a while usually when you start the first session you start out and you take your grip and you and you put your thumb on the shaft anyway by habit habit is memory in the context and that's how your brain works people as a colleague doesn't know that by the way I haven't figured that out yet so once you learn one skill and you put it into place and you can hit balls and do all that stuff I can't play golf anymore I'm too tired I can hit the ball if to here talk to camera but it's basically all I can do now I can't really play golf because it wears me out I crash which means the whole sound can be ruined for me because I'm body doesn't recover that's a bummer of course but anyway this is how it works with the takeaway and the backswing and people can't teach you this now some of you will say what about the bent arms well that's as I said bent arm is for power once you get this and the rest of the things I teach you will go yeah oh yeah you will start doing that I can't hit it a lot longer here but you know I don't want to do that because I can hit someone with it. That's not the point of golf. Now, once you get this, that uh, my instruction is not a rebranding of skills. It's not rebranding of concept. It's teaching you skills that you need to have to move your body correctly because I correlated how the body needs to move. And when I teach that, what's the difference? One of my members is a golf instructor in Southern Europe. I'm not going to tell you his name. Because if I do that, some of you are assholes and you will call P gay and said this guy is teaching my stuff and it works better. He was teaching this iteration that I presented a year ago, the first iteration, and he did it himself and he had this kid, 18 year old, and this kid hit the eight iron before with the, he was teaching the kid, right, with the old P gay modern golf takeaway around, I don't know. 160 yards, 8 iron, 160 yards, something like that. And um, then when he was teaching my takeaway, my iteration of it, he added 30 yards to his 8 iron. So he went from 160 to 165 yards to up to 200 yards. Now, if you're 18 years old and want to be a two pro, you suddenly add 30 yards and it feels when he started doing it, it felt weird because he started doing, moving his body correctly for the first time in history. And he was like, what the hell has happened? And this instructor sent me trackman about the difference. You know, he sent me the trackman of, you know, he, he said, you know, this kid was doing 165, 60, 65 yards. And this is the new trackman, as he said, with my takeaway. And uh, because I don't need to prove anything. Other people do it for me. I don't want to spend a lot of time on bullshit, right? I can't teach you what other people teach in golf because it doesn't work. They teach you so much stupid stuff there thinking they know what they're talking about. Then you have you know, people who are fans, you know, they think they know what to talk about. Oh, this instructor is really good, he knows what he's talking about. And when I check it out, the same thing there, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And people have a hard time with that when I tell people that it, it's the instructor, they pay a lot of money. I actually have no clue what the hell they're supposed to do in teaching. I'm a bit tired, I'm not, you know, doing it so good today, but I'm done. And hopefully I can, uh, this is how it works. Just to say it's simple. This is how, you know, the takeaway should work. Because if you don't have this understanding and skill, that if your body doesn't move correctly, then you will always do it wrong in your takeaway. That means if you do it wrong and you take away, then you need to fix it. And if you don't know that, then your fix is not, most likely going to end up you struggling. A lot of people, are amateurs, for example, they take it on the inside. And now what they have to do and learn to do is to, you know, basically do that. Which is over the top and all the other shit. Because they don't understand how the body needs to move. I figured that out. So I can teach you the skills needed so you can move your body correctly and start learning how to move your body so you can actually have goals so it actually works all the time.
that doesn't need fixing, that doesn't, you know, you don't lose it. It just works. Like tying shoelaces, riding a bike, driving a car, whatever else. Anyway, I'm exhausted here. So I'm gonna stop. Hope you enjoyed this, ladies and gentlemen, everybody else. That you learned something you didn't know you did need to learn. Because this gold professional like Sean Fool, Lemonti Schoenblum, you know, Mark Rothfield, such, they don't get this, they don't understand this because they don't know. Now you do.